start with a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 3. Second letter to Timothy, chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. You, though, have followed my teaching, my way of life, my aims, my faith, my patience and my love, my perseverance, and the persecutions and sufferings that came to me in places like Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, all the persecutions I have endured. And the Lord has rescued me from every one of them. But anybody who tries to live in devotion to Christ is certain to be persecuted, while these wicked impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and themselves deceived. You must keep to what you have been taught and know to be true. Remember who your teachers were, and how ever since you were a child, you have known the holy scriptures. From these you can learn the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and useful for refuting error, for guiding people's lives, and teaching them to be upright. This is how someone who is dedicated to God becomes fully equipped and ready for any good work. The word of the Lord. So dear brothers and sisters, uh, we are going to have a small journey through the life of our spiritual father, brother Victor. So this day is specially we commemorate this day as a hope that when we share about the lives of holy people, people who have followed the Lord, people who have had something extraordinary in their life in following Jesus Christ, that may be an encouragement for us in our own faith journey. All of us are trying to follow Jesus. We are all Christians. All of us are trying to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And sometimes when we listen to the lives of holy people, the saints, we know it's a great encouragement for us. And we might think it's an encouragement above all. Because I think some of one of the most uh, op serious obstacles that all of us encounter in our spiritual life is discouragement or a feeling maybe this is not possible for me. The spiritual life is not possible for me. I have tried, I fall. But when we listen to the journey of the saints, of holy people, you know, that's a great encouragement for us. And today we, we are remembering someone very special. In fact, two people, Brother Victor and Brother Shaji, two people who really followed the Lord. We know. Uh, this community of grace, all of us are somehow or the other, we have encountered the community. And most of all, it's, it, you know, there is uh, uh, the faith in Jesus, sticking to the eternal goal, the kingdom of God, heaven. Heaven is our goal. God has created all of us for eternal life, wisdom to 23. John 17, 3, this is eternal life, to know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So to keep following Jesus till our last breath and having daily conversion, trying to be better daily. We know this is our aim and the community of grace, all of us, we began our spiritual journey by meeting this particular person, Brother Victor. So let us just walk through his life. We may all find some things that may encourage us too, something that may help us too. So first of all, I think one, a few words which we can associate with Brother Victor, when we think of Brother Victor. Uh, one thing is grace. We just heard the talk on grace. He was, he really experienced the grace of God really in his life. What is grace? 
and he was constantly speaking about grace. Brother Victor was a person, um, he was a very special person. So meeting him, I don't think people will, people who have met him will ever forget him, people who have met him, someone very special. What was special about him? One thing is, he, he was a person was very much convinced about the importance of grace and also filled with grace. He used to say, because he experienced the power of grace in his own life, he was, uh, uh, he used to always speak about his conversion, the importance of grace. So he used to say, I was a completely worldly person before Jesus encountered me or I encountered Jesus through a retreat. And through, during that retreat, Brother Victor, uh, he was actually gently, gently pressurized by his wife, or gently, rather, gently persuaded by his wife to attend a retreat. He was uh, not very interested, not at all interested, in fact. So by his wife's gentle persuasion, he said, let me attend this retreat. And he, she was specially praying for him. Um, so he attended this retreat, and during this retreat, Brother Victor said, the time God touched him. He always used to speak about this time. Because he used to say, same way in our lives, the Holy Spirit has to touch us too. All of us. The Holy Spirit has to touch us. So it's good for all of us, sometimes when we can't change or when we don't change, it's good for all of us to pray for a touch of the Holy Spirit, a touch. So this was his touch. So he was sitting during the retreat. He didn't, he said his experience was he did not understand a single word of God. And his mind was fully blocked. He was very uneasy. And he wanted to get out of this retreat as soon as possible. After the first day, he immediately said to his wife, let us go home. I don't like it. I don't like this retreat. Let us go home. So she was very worried. She, she was again praying. And she said, try one more day. Let us see what's going to happen. And she was praying. And the second day came. The After the second day, there was a time for confession. And Brother Victor hadn't been for confession for many years. And he wanted to avoid going to confession. So he sent his wife away go to the first floor, I will confess on the ground floor. And as soon as his wife was out of sight, he immediately escaped from the retreat center, from the building. And he thought, now where is a good place for me to hide? <laughs> Until this whole business is over, this confession and everything, then I will go back. So he noticed, just like we have a grotto here in this church, if you walk towards, there's a grotto. And behind the, that particular grotto, there was a grotto in the retreat center, there was a very nice, garden and everything is nice space behind the grotto nobody would see so he went and sat in that place he said nobody is going to find me here let me relax so so he was sitting there but he said while he was sitting there something very, very strange happened so this was really the grace of god that means something totally undeserved totally undeserved god just we know God can touch any person anywhere. Brother Victor always used to say that. He used to say God can touch anyone anywhere. Anywhere. We don't know when God is going to touch us. And of course, that particular place at that time where he went, it was a very, very holy place. There were a lot of holy priests there. And that, that was helping that particular place. So he was, he was sitting there. And suddenly he felt as if a ray from heaven, like a powerful ray from heaven coming and striking him. He just felt a powerful wave of energy coming and striking him. He did not know what it was. Because he had no spiritual background. He did not know about the Holy Spirit or nothing. No zero spiritual background. His background at that time was he was a quite a intelligent man, learned man. He had a degree in arts, then a degree in law. He was a criminal lawyer, practicing criminal lawyer. After his degree in law, he did another degree. 
So you can imagine he was quite quite learned, and he was uh, he was uh, an avid reader, and he was very much interested in that time finding answers to questions in life. He read philosophy books. You know, sometimes people read philosophy books to find out the meaning of everything or the truth. And he says, when I read all these philosophies, I lost my faith in Christianity, in, in Christ. And I thought, oh, this philosophy is good, and uh, this is nice. And so he always used to say, Colossians 2.8, be careful about reading uh, too much things which can lead you astray in Christ. But only when Christ comes, you can understand you can assess anything that you read, whether it is good or bad. But without Christ, be careful about reading things. It can uh, totally destroy your faith. Colossians 2.8, St. Paul tells us, be, be careful. Make sure that no one captivates you with the empty lure of a philosophy of the kind that human beings hand on, based on the principles of this world and not on Christ. So St. Paul is warning the Colossians, be careful. So anyway, this was his experience. He completely lost his faith. That was his background. He felt this ray striking him, and immediately he said he lost his eyesight. For a moment, everything was dark. And the next feeling was a deep, overwhelming feeling of repentance, sorrow. Or he began to feel, I am a sinner. And my God, I have done so many sins in my life. I... I need to change. A very deep feeling of repentance. I have done so many sins in my life. I need to change. And this feeling of sorrow, very powerful sorrow was coming into his life. He said later, this was Genesis 1-2. What is Genesis 1-2? That is, Genesis 1-2 refers to the power of the Holy Spirit. In the beginning of the Bible, beginning of creation, the whole power of the Holy Spirit which created the whole world. Now, this word of God says, Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, with a divine wind sweeping over the face, over the waters. Divine wind. So it's to say, this is what struck me. This divine wind came and struck me. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is moving in the world. The power of the Holy Spirit. And we know, we don't know whom it strikes. And a moment is enough for the Spirit just to strike a person. You know, St. Paul was struck with the Holy Spirit. St. Augustine was struck with the Holy Spirit. These are all people who were not very interested in, you know, conversion or all those things. The Holy Spirit just struck them. They began to cry. They began to repent. They began to change. So the same way, the power of the Holy Spirit just struck Brother Victor. From then onwards, he began a journey. What happened? First of all, he realized, I am a sinner. I am a great sinner. I need change. And he began to, he was just weeping, crying. And he, all his sins came, he said, I have to make a confession. That was the first thing that came into his mind. And he began to move towards, back to the building, where the confession, confessions were going on. And he saw a priest. One priest was free. He went to this priest. He knelt before this priest, but he was not able to speak anything because he was deeply repenting, deeply crying. So he said, my experience was like Mary Magdalene crying at the feet of Jesus. Because Brother Victor lived a, quite a worldly life and he, he was not at all spiritual. In his house, there was everyday parties, drinking parties and merry making. Even on sometimes Good Fridays and everything, there was no mass. I mean, no, nothing. He was sometimes involved in other things. So he, all these things came to his mind. And he said, I'm a big sinner, Lord. I want to confess. I want to change. And he knelt before this priest. He was not able to complete his anything. He was not able to speak. After some time, this, this priest came out of this confession and just embraced him. Just consoled him and said, God forgives you. And gave him the absolution. After a long time, he went back. Uh, Brother Victor went back. He said, from that time onwards, I was a changed man. I was touched. And he said, from the time the Holy Spirit touched me, immediately the biggest change I noticed was I began to 
pay attention to the word of God. The word of God was, whatever was being preached, it was just striking me. And the first word of God that he heard after this experience was John 3.3. 3. What is John 3.3? 3? That is Jesus is saying, uh, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus spoke these words to Nicodemus, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So when Brother Victor heard this verse, uh, I cannot express what he felt. For him it was like, a, I don't know, like a big uh, door being opened or a big uh, revelation. Because uh, kingdom of God, that just struck him very deeply, kingdom of God. Because he came to realize, we are in this world, there is a big kingdom, God's kingdom. And he used to say, you know God's kingdom, there is God, saints are there, angels are there. I remember the first time I met Brother Victor, first time I as a young man, a boy of 17, I met Brother Victor. First time, he was speaking about scripture, he was, when I met him, he was speaking about spiritual things. Angels, you know, angels are there, they come to help us. I was saying, angels? I didn't know there are angels. I was a, I'm, a, I'm a Catholic, baptized Catholic. I didn't have any faith in all these things. Angels, devil also, I was doubting. Is there a devil or something? That's a, made up, a, maybe a fiction. I was thinking it was all a fiction. Devil is a fiction, Satan, all these things. To frighten people or something, we say, don't sin, there is devil. I, I, I was thinking it was all a fictionary character, devil. Angels, I didn't have any, any idea. Jesus, I was, okay, I had attended retreat, so I knew. But before that, even I was confused about Jesus. What about other gods? They are also there. They are good people. Why can't we, uh, everybody is going to, you know, salvation. You can take any road. This was my kind of thinking. I also had no background. So the first time he spoke about angels, and I was just open-eyed, I was just listening. Angels. And... Uh, <laughs> So he was speaking as if he is experiencing. He says, when we speak the word of God, angels will come to listen. And when I, was heard, I heard that, I was really feeling there are some, maybe there are some angels here. I was feeling very scared. Oh, I, let me be reverent. Let me be <laughs> a good person now. Because he was saying, when we speak the word of God, angels will come to listen. And he speak, spoke the scri scripture about it, 1 Peter 1.12. There St. Peter says, 1 Peter 1.12. It was revealed to them that it was for your sake and not their own that they were acting as servants, delivering the message which has now been announced to you by those who preach to you the gospel through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even the angels long to catch a glimpse of these things. So he was speaking this word of God. And he was saying, angels will come to listen. When we speak the word of God in the spirit, when, if we are spiritual, if we are holy, angels. So, now let's come back to the story, kingdom of God. So he, for him, it opened up a big door, kingdom of God. And then his, I think the whole direction of his life changed. Because he saw, it began to dawn on him. So if everything that the gospel says is true about the kingdom of God, Jesus, angels, saints, then my life has to totally change for another direction. And you know, and born again, he began to inquire, what is this born again? Because that says, born again, you can see the kingdom of God. He always used to say this, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't understand all these things. Born again, born again, born again. We, you know, many, sometimes Christian denominations also use this word, born again. And they plunge into water and say we are born again. But it's not, you know, that's not the uh, real born again. John 3, 5, Jesus clarified. No truth I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born through water and the spirit. So what is it? He experienced from his life, this is a deep, this is a special cleansing of our soul, spiritual cleansing, where we are purified by water and the Holy Spirit. That means our soul, all of us, we have to go through a cleansing. Water is 
word of God. He used to say, what is water in the Bible? Living water, Jesus speaks about living water, water, come to the waters. That is the word of God. And from him, uh, the word of God, and another thing, grace, he experienced the grace, undeserved gift. He used to say, grace is an undeserved gift. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So he used to say, always, you see, you will receive grace, but then he always used to warn, don't become proud. You know, because once we receive grace, that there is an automatic temptation, now this is me. I am good. I am righteous. I am doing good works. You know, we human beings, once we receive grace, we always think, now it's me. But he always used to say, sometimes we receive spiritual gifts. You know, it's, it's the grace, free gift. God gives to us when we are sinners, when we have a conversion. God gives everybody many graces. But he always used to say, now, it is, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. Not by anything of your own, but by a gift from God. Not by anything that you have done, so that nobody can claim the credit. So he used to say, this is a pure gift of God. Now, grace, another thing which he used to stress was, so... That's why he, he, because of his importance of grace, he said, you see, our spiritual life, whatever we do, we always have to make sure it is grace working through us. He always used to say, look at me. I am now 24 hours I am for Jesus. You see, he was, uh, he was a very, for 18 months after his conversion, he came home and he wound up his law practice. He said, now I have to devote myself to what I have uh, discovered, the scripture. And his wife initially did not understand, although his wife went, took him for the retreat. But later, she look, came back and when she looked, she, he's always with the Bible. Then she began to doubt, what is this? Is this something gone wrong with him or what is this? She was a doctor. She, she came here, I think many of you may have met her, uh, Dr. Clarema. She was here for Brother Billis ordination, she was here carrying the, 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 the vest, the chassis belt. But, so she was initially was wondering, what is it? Is it something, something has gone wrong with him? And so Brother Victor was very sad. He was saying, oh, my wife, she, is, she brought me to this retreat. Now she is, she is doubting me. And, but Brother Victor was a very silent. He knew, God revealed to him the power of, he was just silently praying. God give faith. And there was a big incident, which we don't have time to, Maybe I'll just narrate it. Um, it's a very special incident. All of us may not really grasp it. Okay, it was a miracle. In fact, he said, you know, they were driving on the road, both of them in the car. So Brother Victor, he was during that time tremendously in prayer. I mean, day and night he was going through the scriptures, reading the Gospel of John. God was revealing so many things. And he began to have, okay, speaking about speciality of Brother Grace, Word of God, deliverance, Word of God. He had a special gift like Saint Anthony. Uh, this was actually revealed, I mean revealed means uh, publicly said by a bishop. It was a bishop of Kotem, the archbishop, I mean the bishop of, uh, uh, sorry, Vijayapuram Diocese, Archdiocese of Vijayapuram. So this bishop came to a particular program where Brother Victor was preaching. And after that, they came to have lunch together. I was also there in that house to, to serve, serve food at that time. Uh, it was in my aunt's house that they came to have lunch after this program. So this bishop was telling Brother Victor, Brother, I heard you speak the scripture. It was like Saint, you know, it was like Saint Anthony. You were speaking the scriptures so much. Saint Anthony, you know, he had a tremendous gift. Actually, Brother Victor's life and Saint Anthony's life have many similarities. Both of them, you know, after their, you know, Scott touched them, 18 months they spent fully with the Bible. 18 months. Saint Anthony also, if you read his life story, 18 months fully with his Bible. He asked his superior, I need time to pray. And his superior allowed him time. 18 months fully with the Bible. Fully. Uh, he always just uh, had... I think once a day he was eating, but that time fully with the scripture. Till after 18 months, uh, the Bible, I mean, uh, St. Anthony says, the whole scripture was in his heart, St. Anthony. And then he came out, you know, God made an occasion for him to preach. 
everyone was astounded. How is this so much of power is coming out of this friar? Same thing in the life of Brother Victor. 18 months fully with the scripture. Day and night just reading the Bible. Till the entire Bible was in his heart. I mean, if, you, if a person met Brother Victor, uh, he, he's, he, he will not just uh, keep quiet. But from him stream is flowing, stream is gentle stream of scriptures, always, uh, one after another, As scriptures are always flowing, uh, I think Brother Brilli or Brother Abi, if you ask them or me, I mean we, we, we've seen Brother Victor, Brother Georgie has seen Brother Victor, if you have uh, some, maybe some, some pe people also here, I think this couple here, friend, they have met Brother Victor, um, so uh, anyone who saw him, you know, just ask what was his speciality? Scripture, word of God is always flowing out. He can't even stop. I mean, he says it is just flowing. A gentle stream is always flowing out. The scripture, one after another. And there will always be people writing down and so many things are going on. And then while he is speaking scripture, miracles are all taking place. I mean, so many times, you know, people are there in the church or sometimes... There will sometimes be people possessed or somebody, I mean, these are all new experiences, even for me, to see all these things. Then they would, you know, people possessed would immediately scream and fall down and roll, and then finally they would, wherever they would, they would like roll and come down near him, and brother would show the Bible and they would surrender. For me, and it was the first time, big experience. My God, this is, what is this? This is a devil, is, is he really there? Okay, I mean. So deliverance, a powerful gift of deliverance. Deliverance means, I mean, even Brother Victor was first afraid when he saw it because he also did not know what is this. It is a, what is happening? When he went to a prayer meeting, there was one lady when she saw him, she suddenly screamed and fell to the ground. And Brother Victor was afraid. What is this happening? But then he understood God. He was praying, Lord, what is this? Then it's an unclean spirit. In the Bible, we see this unclean spirit. Mark 1, 21 to 28. When Jesus was preaching in the synagogue, there was this unclean spirit. I remember when first Brother Victor said unclean spirit, I was very much afraid. Oh, I am very much afraid now. What is this? I don't want to hear about all this devil and all. But later, you know, when we started to learn the word of God more and more, no, that fear went. You know, it's not, we should be afraid of the devil. Sometimes, you know, many people, many of us also have sometimes fear of the devil. No, no. It's not, we should, we should not fear the devil, but whom should we fear? Does uh, anywhere in the Bible we see anybody who was following Jesus was afraid of the devil? Do we see? We saw the devil, they ran away or anything? No. But we read in the Bible, devil ran away from them, isn't it? So, we should not be afraid of the devil, rather, devil should be afraid of us, us, when we have the word of God, the Bible says he will tremble with fear. James 2.19. James 2.19. The Bible says, uh, James 2.19. You believe in the one God that is creditable enough, but even the demons have the same belief and they tremble with fear. So devils, the Bible says, they tremble with fear. Fear. Brother Shaji, when he was explaining this, the time has uh, passed, explaining this was used to say, the devil has one, okay, good, it's not a good quality, but one, at least one quality which human beings don't have. What is that? Human beings have no fear of God, but he has, fear of God means he knows the power of God. But we have no fear of God. He says, we simply go in front of God, we have no respect or anything, but he has, he trembles with fear when he hears the name of Jesus or something. So, so okay, so I'll come back to the miracle. So they were going in the car and Brother Victor noticed a particular tree, tree. So even before sharing this incident, I'm already giving a kind of a, I think many of us may not understand it, but this is what happened, how his wife got faith. And this tree, Brother Victor immediately knew this particular tree, I mean, in India, those who come from, they know people do a lot of things under sometimes trees and objects, a lot of sometimes pujas and all these things, many things are done. So, Brother Victor immediately just prayed and said, 
this tree is going to wither. Prayed and said, this tree is going to wither. Then his wife thought, what is this you are saying? Tree is going to wither. This tree, I know this tree, it's every day in front of the house we are passing. And uh, how is this going to wither? So it happened that after three or four days, they went again by that road. This tree was completely, miraculously, it was withered. And she saw there are some people, there's nothing. Some people are cutting the root the next time they are passing. She was completely, she was great faith. She was, uh, so from that time onward, she was very much, uh, she said, oh, my, what my husband is saying now, there is a meaning in it. Okay, let me listen to him. Okay, so very interesting incident. So that was how his wife got faith. And But later, both of them started to really come close to the uh, scriptures. So Brother Victor went through the entire, he said, to my wife also God gave grace. Another grace, she by-hearted all the Psalms, 150 Psalms. You know that Dr. Clarima who came, she knows by heart. And it's another grace, gift. 150 Psalms she studied by heart. So she was, uh, got a tremendous gift of praise. So anyway, uh, they started a, a great uh, movement. I mean, there was a prayer meeting. A lot of people came. We three of us, we also happened to visit and we were all really, we were young boys. You know how difficult it is to catch young boys. It's not easy. Catch means, uh, I mean, if we have, three of us have devoted our life for a cause, you can imagine there must have been something very special which happened in our lives. Otherwise, how is it possible? Three young men and uh, we, know, we had our own things to do. And, but something really captured us, held us froze us uh, really in our tracks uh, when we met this person, Brother Victor, and uh, I, all of us were really attracted by his faith and his zeal for Jesus. And uh, so he always used to say, see, this is the work of the Lord. It will continue. And then he spoke about, I mean, all three of us, he said, God has specially chosen you. Brother Brillis, I remember the first time uh, um, it's very interesting, maybe brother, you get a chance to share about your own meeting with brother Victor. Very interesting uh, meeting. Brother Brillis came to my house and I said, you know, I met a wonderful person, brother Br Victor. You, you have to go to him. But unfortunately, I was not able to take him. So in my family, I think my parents took him to brother Victor's house. Um, and uh, brother Victor, when he saw him he, the first time, so Brother Bliss, his aim at that time was, I want to study well, I want to, uh, he said his aim was to become a police officer. I want to go on a bike and <laughs> capture all the thieves <laughs> and beat them. <laughs> that was his <laughs> dream. <laughs> okay. okay. So he met Brother Victor. Brother Victor looked at him and said, he is a boy of 17. He said, after 18 months you will be a prophet. Then the Brother Brilli did not understand what is this. <laughs> He didn't understand even prophet, he had no idea what it was. He came and after he came home and, uh, Brother Joman, what is this prophet? <laughs> what does it mean, what is prophet? Then I just explained, I said, prophet? He said like that to you? Then he said, yes, this is what he told me, after 18 months you will be a prophet. So, anyway. And uh, he told him, God has caught you on, in a hook, like a fish. You cannot escape now from the Lord. Go where you like, you can't escape from God. And then he dismissed him. <laughs> now go. <laughs> so, but he never went after that. He, he, was, he, he came back and he, you know, he became a big, great, one of Brother Victor's uh, greatest disciples. And uh, so all three of us, we met uh, Brother Victor and it radically changed our life. And uh, we were privileged. Brother Bliss was there for eight, I think about one and a half years he was with Brother Victor. And then he was immediately, he was sent to Goa and Nagaland and he was not there when Brother Victor died. 1993, we met Brother Victor. 1992, 93, we met Brother Victor. I was with him, Brother Ebi and myself were with him for four years. 1997, he died. I was privileged to be with him on the last journey to Second Rabat. Brother Victor's life was an apostolic life, constantly traveling, preaching the good news. 
and we were privileged even though we were also uh, studying at that time at college and everything but we always wanted to go as much as possible to be with him and we had the grace to associate with him and the last journey he 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 completed a mission in second rabat and the last day after he completed the mission the next early morning he was going through a tremendous sufferings as we just heard saint paul saying anybody who tries to live a godly life in union with christ jesus is certain to be persecuted he had a lot of persecutions many people misunderstood him and he had a lot to suffer but he was always an example of uh, christian suffering suffering without uh, the least amount of hatred or uh, suffering like christ he was just suffering everything and he used to say those who persecute us are our benefactors i remember one priest uh, who came from atlanta the priest father larry who preached brother bell's first mass gave the homily for the first mass i just shared this incident with brother uh, with with father larry and father larry heard this he was really amazed he said he said that and he said i'll never forget this so even the next time i saw him he said i still remember what you said about brother victor those who persecute us are our benefactors so he suffered till the end and gave his life to christ and his faith and uh, tremendous faith tremendous love for jesus whole life for jesus what an example and that example is still still driving us he said god has great plans for this uh, charism it will spread through all the countries he even said the countries where it's going to come uh, countries some countries in south america some countries in europe some countries in this all these places this charism will spread some special special countries he has said and so many things he prophesied i mean for this was going to take place and we can see uh, this is truly the work of the lord uh, all his prophecies just coming true one by one by one uh, they are coming true great things uh, but, it, but he always used to say why because this is god's work it's not my work my, i am not important i will die but this work will not die because it is the work of the lord acts chapter 5 38 to 42 there gamaliel said What I suggest therefore is that you leave these men alone and let them go if this enterprise this movement of theirs is of human origin it will break up of its own accord but if it does in fact come from god you will be unable to destroy them take care not to find yourselves fighting against god so he used to say this movement is from god it will continue god's own work it will continue so we can see that it is it is it is continuing otherwise it will break up but we can see that it is uh, continuing you know uh, he gave a tremendous example of a christian life and an apostolic life and urging us to aim for eternal life count our sufferings struggles we may fall fail does not matter jump up get up again follow jesus jesus is the true god and eternal life 1 john 5 20 let us also dear brothers and sisters follow the lord let us uh, offer up our own sufferings or persecutions or whatever we may have obstacles let us offer it up for the good lord let us tell the lord lord i am ready to carry my own cross give me your faith and grace as st ignatius of loyola prayed give me only your love and your grace and that is enough and i am ready to follow you that is also say these words to jesus praise the lord